Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. So, uh, we are continuing our Budget Kindred series and we're actually starting on the last one of our exemplars, um, the Elves. So this is Elves for every deck. Elves that probably will fit into like just about any deck. You're gonna have a deck that you can use some of these. What are we covering? So I've been over this so many times. I'm calling them exemplars. They're just the creature types that have a very high affinity with one color. This is actually the last one, Elves Green, very green. I feel like White Leonin I did, that's true at one point. More and more, they're kind of going off that. Anyway. Okay, we're all, I'm also using this to cover the kind of top five kindred. I'm calling the big five. Um, it, it, this is somewhat debatable, right? You can't really say, oh, these are the top five for sure, because there's a, uh, always room for like debate on that it's very much an opinion question i guess so we've got dragons goblins elves vampires humans okay so we're doing elves right now i've already done goblins so i've already done this is going to be starting the second step of this one i guess so kind of a weird one but anyway here we go what about elves so their main color is green they are extremely useful and very uh green focused so they've got lots of mana drops they've got uh things to search out lands they've got a lot of effects that will work out to like give you mana or mana fixing also they have lots of buffs not just kindred buffs just like buffs in general and uh removal not to mention just tricks they're pretty good with tricks not as good as wizards but they're up there so this is the first video on the series on the most broadly useful ones. Again, this is the one I think where this list is, you're gonna see something where you go, oh, that's what my deck needs. When I say budget, I usually mean $2 or less. For this video, it's actually under $1. Everything came in under $1. I was not even trying for that, it just worked out. Honorable mentions, so these are 12 cents or less. We've got, uh, uh, Glit Leaf Winnower, I think I always say Gilt, but it's Glit. <clears throat> for 3 Black Black, a 4-3, again, 4-3 with Menace, not bad. Also, Black already getting off. The black is very much their secondary color. <clears throat> and when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target non-elf creature whose power and toughness aren't equal. There's no way there isn't a creature with power and toughness not equal. Um, and it's just not equal. It doesn't say like one has to be greater than the other, just not the same. Um, you, you're probably gonna be able to like new someone's commander with this, or if you're playing commander. This will do some work, however, and if you can flicker it, it's crazy. Frontier Guide. For only one and a green, it's a one, one. For three and a green, you can tap him to search your uh, library for a basic land card and put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So this goes straight to the battlefield it is limited to basic lands, but if you need mana fixing, this is going to do it. If you've got like a Wooberg deck or something, or even a four color deck, this is the kind of effect you need to make sure that you've got your mana fixing done and you've got the colors that you need in it. So yeah, this will this can fix a lot of problems and it's like 12 cents. Mm. Fierce Empath. Okay, this is getting to more niche. Um, Two and a green for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, uh, search your library for a creature card with mana value, six or greater, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So you gotta have something with mana value six or greater, but in a high mana value deck, this is just go out and get whatever you want. Um, if you built a high mana deck, definitely get this. I have a uh, Averna, the Chaos Bloom, a Teamer deck, so it's uh, green, blue, red, and yeah. This is awesome in that because he comes into the battlefield and just immediately go get whatever you want. Especially it's a cascade deck, so having more control is nice. Number five. Uh, Vishona, Vishona Drow Apostate. For a two and a black is a two, three. I feel like I'm saying her name wrong, but anyway. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more creature cards in your graveyard, return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, automatic recursion, right? This is crazy good. Usually recursion is gonna cost you like one or two mana, which isn't a lot, but it's gonna cost you a card as well. This is just automatically doing it every turn. Just throwing it back in. 
you do need four in there and you don't get to choose which one is coming back. Those are the two main downsides. Um, still, it just is a very powerful ability that um, you can probably get a lot of value out of. If people, <clears throat> excuse me, if people are, you know, knocking your things to the graveyard, it's probably because they're good things that you want to have back, right? So I feel like this isn't much of a downside to having it random. But anyway, 12 cents only. Also, choose a background if you want to make this commander. Uh, four, uh, bleh, number four. Copperhorn Scout, one green for a one one. Whenever Copperhorn Scout attacks, untap each other creature you control. Each other creature, not each other attacking creature. First of all, so any activated like tap abilities, you get to do them twice by her just attacking once. Also, this untap effect does not make everything else remove things from combat, right? If you're attacking and you attack with her, that doesn't take them out of combat. They do untap. So it's kind of like, um, no, I can't remember. Vigilance, yeah, it's basically like a weird version of Vigilance. So yeah, they are still attacking, but they will be untapped. There are a lot of effects that untap and remove from combat. There's no remove from combat. Anyway, 18 cents. Number three. Cultivator of Blades, three green green for a 1-1. One, one. This is expensive for a 1-1. One, one. Five mana is up there. Usually I would not like it unless it was this basically fabricate two so when it enters you can put two plus one plus one counters on it so you can make it a three three or create two one one servo artifact creature tokens that gives you kind of a, an amount of control that's really nice like do you want to have three creatures or do you want one bigger creature and whenever it, it attacks you may have other target creatures you control get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is cultivator blades power so anytime the Cultivator Blades attacks, you can just give all your other creatures a bonus, a bonus to attack and toughness equal to Cultivator Blades to, uh, attack. Um, that's crazy. That's not even, that doesn't cost you mana. That doesn't, like, you have to attack. That's it. Um, throw some kind of equipment on, on Cultivator Blades and, or a bunch of plus one, plus one counters. And yeah, hey, proliferate, you can just, fabricate and then proliferate right and yeah there's your mass amount of uh plus one plus one counters this especially in like token decks this can basically be a win con i think this can be a win con in a lot of decks anyway 21 cents number two tome of horrors adventurer i really like this one i think it has the dungeon mechanic on it. that's what puts people off Five and a blue for a four four, so not cheap either. But when it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Taking the initiative is great because it works like, um, I forget the name of everything. I wrote it down, I think. Not on here. Anyway, once initiative is in the game, if a player does damage to you, you lose it. They gain it at the end of the turn. They get to advance through a dungeon. So this just, once it's in the game, it's there. Initiative is there for the rest of the game. So this gets it going, um, which is nice with him. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, each turn, if you've completed, uh, copy it, sorry. So each turn, your second spell, copy. Copy any spell, anything you want. This is, if you copy, a, you can cast a creature, make a copy of the creature, or you can just copy any removal, any, anything um oh boy uh if you've completed a dungeon copy that spell twice instead you may choose new targets for the copy so you can copy the spell twice if you've done completed a dungeon once again this gets initiative into the battle so or into the game so that can get you going through it even if you don't have other sources of like going through a dungeon this might be able to do it and even if not you're still copying your second spell every single turn that's crazy. Anyway, 23 cents. <clears throat> Number one. Do you know it from the art already? Maybe. I really like this art. This is freaky up close. I never saw it this close before. Poison Tip Archer for two Golgari, so uh, black green, a two three with reach and death touch. 
Reach and Death Touch is a nice combo already. Whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. What does it not say? Creature you control. It does not say that. Anywhere on the board, any creature dies, all of your opponents are losing one life. Um, if there's like a board wipe, this still triggers. Like it does die, but it still triggers with all of the other creatures. So yeah, your opponents have to be like, oh, if I cast this board wipe, the, this guy wins, you know? This other player is just gonna win the game if I use a board wipe now. And you can definitely use that to your advantage, right? Play board wipe, wipe out everything, great. Um, you're just gonna basically do a whole pile of damage right there. Anyway, 55 cents, this has gone up and down quite a bit. If you're gonna get it, definitely now's the time. The list, okay. So, uh, Vishona? V Vishonia? Uh, that's wrong. Drow Apostate, uh, 12 cents. Copperhorn Scout, 18 cents. Cultivator of Blades, 21 cents. I should order more of those. Tome of Horrors Adventurer, 23. Don't let the dungeon mechanic thing put you off. Copying a spell every turn, even if you, you get it twice, You've gotten like a 4, 4, and 2 copied spells, so that's worth it. Poison Tip Archer, 55 cents. Alright, take it easy.